friends, welcome back to playing tribute to Ace Attorney Investigations 2, fan translation, Prosecutor's Path, where we are in the grand tournament, tor wow, the grand turnabout, the grand finale of this game, uh, and we're in the middle of it. We, we, we've been through a lot uh, so far. Uh, the last part alone was about three hours, so uh, a lot happened, and I think we accomplished a lot. Uh, I believe that, um, well, you know, I'm, I'm so proud of Sebastian. We're, he's doing great. Uh, we have figured out some things with, uh, past, uh, cases. Um, the, the criminals of those past cases have been pretty much brought to justice. I don't know. It's still kind of, I mean, they're going into to trial and all that stuff. So that's all, uh, having been done. So... Yay. Uh, however, we do have a little bit of an issue that, that kind of popped up. Uh, Lang is pretty certain that Justine Courtney, our judge friend, is guilty of killing the Zhengfa president uh, because she was seen with him, or she was the last person seen with him alive. So we are going to have to try and figure out what happened there. Um, I think that that's where we're heading into now. So let's get started. Without any further ado. Oh yeah, and we also still have footprints in our logic uh, mine thing. So that's a thing too. Oh, could you please give it a rest already? The heck? I'm telling y'all, the best for you all's sake to come clean. The staff has their lips sealed shut as the reporters continue their tenacious negotiations. If you're not here to cooperate with the investigation, I must ask you to vacate the premises. Put a sock in it, copper. Y'all couldn't even stop Muzilla's invasion. Not only did they secretly raise a giant monster, but now the staff is trying to cover it up. Like I said, we haven't been raising any monsters here, here in the film lot. But ain't you said you done saw Gordy yourself? Sure, I saw it, but it's not like we were keeping it in the film lot. Mind if we butt in? I don't know who's saying that. Okay, I was thinking it might be Lang, but uh... I wasn't sure. <sighs> Mr. Edgeworth! John! Oh, y'all came here and search for the monster too? We're searching for a criminal, not a monster. Lang Zee says, The darkness inside a criminal's heart can be likened to a monster. Well, when it comes to killing people, criminals aren't much different from monsters. Agent Lang, this is a problem. I can't let outsiders enter the crime scene. These are all key figures in the case. I'd let them be here when that my, bleh, I'd like them to be here when the investigation resumes. Wow, well, sorry guys, I'm not starting out very well with this. <clears throat> it's just Lang, regarding what you said about resuming the investigation. Where did you intend to start? I'll start by reviewing the case. Today the body of President Huang was found here in the film lot. The president's whereabouts from two nights ago are still unknown. It seems he snuck out from under the eyes of his bodyguards and ventured outside. And that night was the last time he was seen alive. It was when he met with you, Judge Courtney, on the roof of the Grand Tower. So why did you meet with the president? That I cannot say. Can't tell us, even under suspicion of murder. Can't say, why not? Miss Courtney, if you don't say anything, you'll only be more suspicious. Not go back! Ha! <laughs> she must have a reason to clam up. I think you're somehow involved in the president's assassination. Objection! The president's body was only discovered today. That still leaves a blank of one whole day after Judge Courtney met with him unaccounted for. Not go back! Don't be so impatient. We're gonna go fill in that blank right here, right now. The evening on that blank day in question is what's important. What happened here last night? So why don't you tell us? John Marsh. 
Me? We know you were here last night. What? Jules? Yeah? Between that little Missy's testimony and the footprints we found, we can easily prove it. John, you were rehearsing here last night, right? You were spying on me? Um, I'm sorry. I just came to check up on things. You really shouldn't be staying up so late. Mind your own business. John Mosh, that young lady was worried about you. You will not speak to her like that. Sorry. How many times have I told you to be more mindful of the way you speak? Is it just me, or does Miss Courtney's personality seem kind of different? She seems to be as strict with her own son as she is with those who violate the law. Are you listening to me? And earlier as well. <laughs> She's lecturing him. <laughs> this might go on for a while. That's amazing. He's just taking it. You should always bear that in mind. No matter the occasion. Not so bad. Can we get on with the investigation already? Ah, uh, pardon me. For Judge Courtney to get carried away like that. This must be her motherly side. Agent Lang, do you suspect John? All I want is the truth. Why was the president killed? And I want to know who killed him. Do whatever it takes to find out. It seems the president was like family to him. John, would it be alright if we asked you a few questions? Sure, it's fine. I got nothing to hide anyway. I wasn't feeling too great during yesterday's shoot, so I made a few bloopers. They're reshooting the scene today, so... I, like, decided to rehearse a little on my own. That's all. I do it all the time. I don't do anything out of the ordinary. You were rehearsing alone that late at night. John, when I called you last night, you told me you were at the hotel. You called him. About what time was that? I believe it was around 11pm. I require him to call me every night. That's our rule whenever he stays away from home. The truth is, I was at the film lot during that time. So you lied to me. <laughs> I'm sorry. This Courtney sure is angry. I think it's admirable that he practiced on his own, even if he hid it from his mom. There was something out of the ordinary, though, wasn't there? Yeah, the footprint was there. Did he not find that odd? It's the only thing that changes between those two things. Okay. I'm sure she was simply worried. Who knows what could have happened to him out alone so late as night. And in reality, he did get caught up in yesterday's incident. But John said there wasn't anything out of the ordinary, right? Is that really the truth? Yeah, I am not... I'm not buying it. Sorry. So there's nothing out of the ordinary. He doesn't know anything at all about the incident. That's the impression I'm getting. But isn't there evidence that shows something did happen last night? Yes, there is. No time to waste dealing with the child's lies. Let's present the contradiction. So, there we go. I was actually going to press it first, but I guess we're going to just point it out. Wait a second, do I present the footprints or do I present the tape? Objection! Okay, alright. I was second guessing myself, that's no good. Just go with the flow! There wasn't anything out of the ordinary. That's a lie, isn't it? We have evidence right here. Uh, could that be? That's right. It's the video you recorded of your performance. Ugh. What? You're telling me you have a video from last night? Exactly. And in this video. There's clearly something that is out of the ordinary. 
this a monster's footprint? Would you say that that monster's foot that wow? Would you say that monster's footprints are commonplace on film set? John, why did you conceal this video from us? No reason, really. Not so bad. Hey, Puff. There's no joking matter. You had a reason to hide it, right? John Mosh, answer him clearly. B Mom. Well. I didn't want anyone to see me rehearsing. In other words, you're embarrassed about others seeing you practice. Yeah. Got a problem with that? Not so bad. You're saying that's why you hid the evidence? John! Eep! Is this backpack full of milk? Quit nagging me. You've already busted me. What more do you want? Yeah, the footprints were there, but I just practiced and headed home. How come you're so calm after finding those footprints? It's a monster, you know. A real live monster. I thought it was just a part of the set. Besides, there's lots of other weird stuff around here, too. He's suspicious, Chief. This kid's really suspicious. You're right. The smell of the scoop stinks to high heaven. Shut up. We're done talking. Objection. We are not done here yet. What now? The monster's footprints weren't the only unusual things that happened last night. Besides the monster's footprints, what other unusual thing happened last night? Uh, the dented wall and the, um, broken horn. The thing falling, right? monstrous head fell from the roof of that building. Surely you must have known about that. I don't know anything about it. Is that true? I told you I just practiced a bit and then I went back. I don't know anything about Mozilla's head falling or anything like that. Or do you have evidence to show that I know something? There certainly isn't any evidence of that. It's also possible that it fell after John had already gone back. If there's no evidence, then like I said, we're done talking. It seems that John doesn't really want to talk about last night. She'd be hiding something after all. Not so bad. Wait up. Is it lying? <laughs> it's as I thought. Thank you, Mr. Crossman. This video backs up my logic. Huh? Is there something in the video that's related to the case? Yeah. Take a good hard look at the monster costume in the top left. The Muzilla costume? Try comparing it with the one over there right now. Is there, like, a hole in the back of it? Hmm, it looks like it's just hanging there limply, though. And the zipper on his back is zipped up tightly. Zipper on its back. This discrepancy is. Yeah, the difference is plain to see. In the video, the zipper is clearly open. That's right, someone was inside. What? President? Mr. Powers, is the costume zipper usually. It's always zipped up tightly when it's not in use. Mr. Prosecutor, do you remember? I watched from before. Stuffed the body somewhere. Hid the body in the film lot. Easy to hide a body in the costume or behind all this equipment. You're saying the body was hidden inside the costume? Yeah, that's right. Judge Courtney! Two nights ago, you pushed the president off the roof of the tower. You then hid the body inside the monster costume. I didn't know such thing. Not so bad. Say what you want, but you're the only one who could have done it. Objection. That should have already been proven impossible. If 
Kiln Watt was locked at the time. Judge Courtney could not have entered this place. Not the best! And what if there was an accomplice? What? I'll tell you my reasoning. So listen up. Is uh, he gonna blame the kid for being the accomplice? That's what I'm that's what I'm feeling. Yep. When the president was pushed off the roof, John was waiting in the film one. If John was an accomplice, the problem with the locks would be resolved. Two of them then hid the president's body. Inside that monster costume over there. You think this crime had such an elaborate plan? Take the life of the nation's president. An elaborate plan is to be expected, don't you think? Overrule! John would never take part in such a crime. Not the best! You're the one being suspected. Your words don't carry much weight. I wouldn't think those two had sufficient motive for something like this, though. Well, maybe they had a motive that we didn't know about. You were the last one to meet with the president, and you're still keeping the details secret. Don't you think it's only natural that you're being suspected? Judge Courtney, is there no way for you to tell us your secret? My apologies. I just cannot... No matter what. However, when the time I can talk about it comes, I will surely let you know. So if you could please... Believe you? Is that what you're going to say? That's what all criminals say. And you, Pop. If you got an explanation, hurry up and spit it out. <laughs> I didn't do nothing. That's all I'm saying. Both mother and son won't talk. You still gonna defend him like this? It's true, Judge Courtney's actions are a mystery. However, we still don't know whether or not that ties in with the motive for murder. Yeah, that's right. Their motive for murder can wait. For now, let's talk about the situation surrounding the crime. And the fact that these two are the only ones who could have done it. I'm just gonna press everything. You know, the normal plan. Agent Lang, don't tell me you're saying John was an accomplice. John still looks like a grade school kid. He's even got a kitty backpack to boot. How could he be an accomplice? There's just no way. Like I said, John's already in middle school, and the backpack is a part of his costume. Not the best. Lang Z says, No matter how young the cub, never pity an ungrateful pup. He may be a little brat, but a villain deserves no mercy. Uh, so Mr. Langsy didn't make any allowances for age. Mr. Prosecutor, you're not just a thing. This is a cop, are you? Of course, that was never my intention. I shall present such a of course. Oh, I'm looking forward to it. My logic's just getting started. How would that resolve the problem? I figured I'd ask that, Mr. Prosecutor, but you know, it's actually quite simple. Listen up. First, that woman pushes the president off the roof. Hmm, she pushes him off. Then, that brat, who knew the combination for the lock, unlocks the film. I see. The combination unlocks the brat. Okay, it's the opposite. That's all it takes. With this, the problem of the lock is solved theory that she couldn't get in because she didn't know the combination no longer flies. Regarding the lock, that certainly is a possible explanation. Agent Lang, thank you for your clear explanation. Please, continue with what you were saying before. <laughs> so, <laughs> so polite. Supposing those two were accomplices, why would they have needed to leave the body hanging there for an entire day? Not the best. Why don't you give it a rest and take a good hard look at reality? Thanks to their trickery, the investigation has been on uh, has been confused up till now. Didn't that about answer your question? Got it. Those two hit the body. Hold it. 
video, we cannot see the inside of this costume. So can you really say for certain that the body was placed inside? Yeah. I'll give you that much. In that case, why don't we try examining it? The inside of the costume. There might be some traces left inside. That's what I was actually thinking. Mr. Powers, may we examine the inside of the costume? Sure, go ahead. I thought it might be kind of stinky, since I saw a lot in there. This is incredibly dirty. That's strange. I always make sure to clean it after using it, so that the sweat doesn't damage the costume. Not the back. Isn't this just proof that someone besides you used this costume? Also, the dirt and the concrete, or like whatever those little bits in the white were. I'd say that dirt from the body probably got in their costume. The president's body did fall on top of the monster's footprint. That must be where the dirt came from. Are you satisfied now? There's dirt inside the costume that must have gotten there when the body was hidden inside. Hold it! So, dirt got in the costume and the body was hidden inside. Wouldn't that mean that the dirt was transferred from the body? Ha! Isn't it obvious? How else would you say it got there? There's dirt stuck everywhere inside the costume. Particularly bad around the chest area. Touch around the chest. We cannot overlook this fact. Mr. Lang's logic does seem to make sense. Indeed, if there's two rare points, the crime certainly would have been possible. So it would be useless to argue that point. In that case, what should we do? Firstly, we should have Agent Lang explain this reason in more detail. Let's draw out more information. Yellow stain on the clothes. But there's no dirt on the body. Besides the yellow stain, he's like very clean. Objection! A dirt got onto the costume when the body was hidden inside it. Is that really the case? You have a problem with that? There's a fair amount of dirt inside the front of the costume. Yeah, that is a lot of dirt. However, I would like you to focus on the state of the bo that the body is in. It's lying on top of the dirt, and yet there's no dirt on the front of the body. If the body really was inside the costume, then it's strange that the front of the body isn't stained with more dirt. Well then, how would you explain it? How the dirt get inside the costume? From the video footage, it's very likely that someone was inside the costume. But just who could it have been? Where have I seen this? What's the matter, Kay? I just feel like I remember seeing something that looked like this dirt somewhere before. Yeah, me too. Oh, uh, on the gloves. But where was it? There were these bits of gray fragments mixed in with the dirt? Yeah. Because I was like, oh, that looks really weird. Yeah. And I was like, it looks like diamonds. But there does seem to be something other than all the dirt listening to us. Something must have gotten stuck to it. And lots of it, I might add. Hmm. Something got stuck to it. So maybe I have to close your book. Where did we see dirt that looks like we're stuck on the inside of the costume? Take that! This dirt has some grey bits mixed into it. Ah, what of it? I found an item belonging to a certain man that was covered in the same type of dirt. That is to say, these gloves. Those dirt stains certainly look the same. But tell me, just what exactly is the gray substance? I kept saying it was concrete, but I don't know. 
fantastic. I don't think it's paint. I kept saying it was concrete, so I'm just gonna go with my gut here. Like this gray substance must be fragments. Frag fragrance. It's the fragrance of concrete. It smells very similar to concrete. <laughs> this gray substance must be fragments of concrete. You mean the stuff that was scattered around the monster's footprints? Exactly. Meanwhile, who do these gloves, which are stained with the same kind of dirt, belong to? Oh, I remember! We found it at Blaze's place! Earlier today, we went to Blaze's garage. There, we discovered these dirt stained gloves. Come to think of it, there are also hammers, shovels, and other tools placed inside as well. Why would mechanics gloves, intended to be used on machines, be covered in dirt? If he broke the concrete with a hammer and then dug into the soil with a shovel, then it's only natural for dirt like that to get in gloves. Then, maybe... Yes, the true nature of the monster's footprints has been made clear. It's possible that these footprints were dug up by Blaze the Best himself. Was he looking for something? Not so fast! It's possible? Huh. It's possible, you say. Please do enlighten me. Because I honestly have no clue. Why on earth would he do something like that? Why did he make the monster for this? Well, the answer must be... He was digging something up. He was looking for something. It's possible he was digging something up. It probably went something like this. Last night, at this spot, there was something that Blaze needed to dig up. For that reason, he broke the lock on the back door and sneaked into the film world. Using the hammer and shovel, he set to work. We don't really know what order he went in. He placed the items he dug up in his bag, but before he could fill any holes... Ah, that's when John came by to practice! Exactly. Blaze panicked and had no choice but to hide himself from the Muzilla costume nearby. I think he would do so much for just a pair of dirt stained gloves. However, all of this is merely a possibility. There's still no proof that he was the one who was hiding inside the costume. For all we know, he might have left the scene once he finished digging. On the contrary, such proof does exist and can be seen. When this video was recorded, Blaze was definitely inside the film world. What? Though I can't blame Major Blank for not noticing. I I'm not noticing. What is What? The difference between the third and film world. Oh! There's like stuff back there, like a bag or something. And the one in John's video. Along with the state of Blaze's garage. It's all too clear that Blaze are still here. Oh, there we go. There's the stuff. The thing that says. Uh, it has a Canada maple leaf or something on it. It says Ver. Or Ever. Which proves that Blaze is still with the film when this video is recorded. Take this bag placed near the costume. There was an identical one inside Blaze's garage. First, the dirt on the gloves, and now the bag. It seems there's a connection. And that's my proof. Blaze was inside the costume. Ergo, the president's body could not have been hidden inside it. Hey, ah, ah! It seems I was able to refute Agent Blank's reason. Someone needs to go investigate Blaze's house right away, pal! We need to know what there was inside that bag! Yes, sir! Yup, 
pipe down and listen up. Y'all just been saying whatever works best for y'all. And the noisy one returns. That there's the footprints of the mighty Mo Muzilla. They ain't just saying some random holes dug up by that old coot. I believe the true nature of those footprints have already been proven quite logically. Logic schmogic. I ain't buying it. Say what you want, but I know what I saw, and I saw Muzilla. Is she referring to how she saw Muzilla out the window of the tower? Upon our journalist's souls, we ain't having none, none of it. That statement is an insult to journalists everywhere. Ah, that's right. There's more to them monsters than just those footprints. I remember hearing that Sunny over there was seen with the monster earlier. I reckon that gal over there said she witnessed it herself. These two are together, but all meaningful talk grinds to a halt. If we only knew just what the monster really was, I think those two would quiet down. Mr. Edgeworth, isn't there anything you could do? The monster's true identity. We don't have much choice. Let's see what we can do. Isn't there something y'all ain't telling us about the monster? Nicole, ask him. Ask him right now. Please settle down. Regarding the true identity of that monster, I already know what it is. What'd you say? That's right. The video John recorded proved that it provided the hint that I needed. What'd you talk about? Miss Nichols on board. When she went to check upon John's practice. After that time, she mistook something for Gordy. This monster can be seen in this photograph. Oh, it can. What? Ain't that just some plain old souvenir photo? Y'all don't really think you can pull the wool over our eyes with a girl like me, do ya? What did Miss Nichols really see that she mistook for Goldie? The camera. I've been saying it from the beginning. Because they said about the tarp going over it. For when it rained, because it was overcast. Not truly. Goldie's true identity was... The camera crew. What? The video John recorded was shot from fairly high up. A shot from this position would be impossible for camera. But there ain't no way Miss Nichols would mistake a camera crane for Gordy. I wondered about that. Miss Nichols. Yes? Earlier you said that the prescription for your glasses didn't match your eyesight anymore, correct? Oh yeah, I remember saying that. Yes, lately it seems like my eyesight has suddenly gotten a lot worse. So would you say that you weren't able to see Gordy very clearly in the dark? That's right. Its silhouette was all I could make out. But remember what Ms. Nichols said? And I quote, its skin was really scaly? Almost like a reptile? Camera cranes ain't got no flesh on them, let alone skin. It's just a bare steel, steel frame. And that's certainly true, at least in the case of this one. However, last night it did have skin. Y'all just do whatever you can to get in the way of our big scoop, ain't ya? That was not my intention. But since I've come this far, it's time to put an end to your nonsense. Gordy's skin is right before our very eyes. This is the skin of Gordy that Miss Nichols saw. The tarp. Take that! Miss Nichols stated in her testimony earlier, it looked like it was going to rain last night. While it never actually rained, John still covered the camera crane with a rainproof sheet. Which, to Miss Nichols, looked like a monster's skin. What? Y you gotta be kidding me. Isn't that right, John? Man, you saw through it all. Not bad, old man. Unfortunately, the Gordy that Miss Nichols saw was nothing more than an illusion. Not again. Looks like my dream has shriveled up and died once again. Mentor. Seems like things have finally settled down. I really thought the boy was hiding something from me. Guess I had it all wrong. Now that we figured out the true form of the monster, everyone seems refreshed. Actually, there's two people here who are totally bummed out. Agent Lang! The report is in, sir. We've got the results of President Huang's autopsy. Oh, lovely. I would love to see the cause of death. 
Good, show it to me. Fusions and bone fractures found across the body, resulting from tremendous pressure. Yep, he was hit with a falling head. So this is the cause of death. So in other words, he was crushed to death. I felt as much. Yellow sea on his chest is currently under investigation. Gunpowder residue was found on his right hand. What? It seems that gunpowder residue was found on his right hand. Sunflower residue? I didn't know the president was into gardening. Mm, gunpowder residue. Traces of it are left behind when a gun is fired. Since it has been found. A gun, huh? But we didn't find any guns when we investigated this area. I explained gun first. Have to look over the autopsy report later. Now then, Agent Lang, it seems we have our answer. Actually, I already looked at the report, so I don't to look at it later. The president did not die from falling off the roof of the Grand Tower. Rather, he died from being crushed under Mozilla's head. Looks like your logic was right after all. This means the suspicion surrounding Miss Courtney should be cleared up, right? Yes, and not only the cause of death, but the time of death proves her innocence as well. Judge Courtney met with the president two nights ago. However, according to the autopsy report, the time of death was around 11 p.m. last night. Mozilla's head also fell last night. It matches up perfectly. That's a relief. Not so bad. In a bit too early to be relieved. Agent Lang. The president died after being crushed by Lucilla's head. That I will admit. But the problem is who was responsible for his falling head. Lucilla's head fell last night, and last night the one who was having the film lot was. Alvaro! What are you saying? Surely you're not implying. That's right. You killed him, didn't you? John Marsh. That pup is hiding something. He was at the scene where the body was discovered last night. He also saw the footprints. And despite that, he still claims to know absolutely nothing about the incident. Not a bit too convenient. Objection! Those footprint-shaped holes have not, not been proven to be related to the case. Just because we saw the ho he saw the holes doesn't necessarily mean that he's involved in the incident. Don't go back! You sure about that? Take a look at the pup's face. Shaking up to me. Looks like he hit the mark. But John doesn't want to talk about it. If he doesn't feel like talking, then I have an idea of my own. Let's check the tape. It's just lying. What is your intention? Police have a device that lets you analyze the video footage up close and personal. It's just lying. You wouldn't suspect John enough to go that far. As long as John's lips are sealed, this may be the only way for us to get closer to the truth. Detective Gumshoe, if I'm not mistaken, you have that device with you, correct? Mr. Analysis is ready to go, sir. Now we're talking. Prosecutor Edgeworth, would you please perform the video analysis for us? She wants me to do it. Who knows what kind of faults that wolfman will find in it? This isn't exactly my strong suit, but I suppose I have no choice. Are there any new clues, sir? This is... What's the matter? I want to see too. Eek! Hey, what's wrong? Show it to me. Prosecutor Edgeworth, I request you submit the evidence to the court. Please take a look at the top right corner of the zoomed in video. This... This person is... They're the president! Impossible! 
Uh-huh, no way. I seem to have finally found it at last. The evidence that points to the true killer. This video piece is drawn to a major disadvantage. You're wrong! That's not right! I didn't know anything about this. It's not gonna cut it. It's clear you and the victim were together in the same place where his body was later found. John Marsh, there's no doubt. You killed the president. No, it's not me. Wh why would you... John, please don't tell me. Did you really kill the president? Mr. Edgeworth, is this really decisive evidence? As decisive as whenever they thought that Courtney was the killer because she was the last one found with the... or seen with the president alive. But he's facing away from where the kid was, so... Maybe he's talking to somebody? Mr. Prosecutor, looks like even you can't object to this. That pup said he didn't know anything, right? And yet the president's right here in the video. John, what are you hiding? John, please tell us the truth. The, the truth is... The truth is... It's all my fault. John Marsh, what did you do? Mozilla's head falling was all my fault. Uh-oh. While I was setting up the equipment on the roof, I used the heater. After that, I went down to practice, but I forgot to turn it off. And my mom called me, so I left the film on. When I came back to the lot, after the film call was over, Mozilla's head that was on the roof had fallen. And right next to it was the president lying dead on the ground. Oh, darn. H how can that be? I see. There are indeed traces that something has caught on fire on the rooftop. It was just a small fire, so I was able to put it out myself. So, the president's death was John's fault? But wouldn't that make this an accident, sir? And then, what did you do with the fallen head? I took it apart, brought the pieces up to the roof, and put it back together. Not go back! So, you put out the fire. You can put the fallen head back on the roof. Which means you were hiding evidence. We can't be having that naughty little pup. I didn't do it on purpose, I really did just forget to turn off the heater. When the legs broke, the stand would have tilted. If Muzilla's head was on top of the stand... Oh, that was Edgeworth, sorry. When the legs broke, the stand would have tilted. If Mozilla's head was on top of the stand, it would have fallen off. So the head fell down because of the fire. Yes, and if that's the case, I also have a pretty good idea what caused the fire. There's a flammable can next to the heater. It seems someone is lacking in safety awareness. Not oh, that was a flashback. Was it really just an accident? If that's the truth, then what was the president doing here? I, I don't know. There was no one else around when I was there. You expect me to believe that? The president would have, would have just come to a place like this without a reason, you know. Indeed, the president's reason for coming here is still a huge mystery. Two nights ago, he met with Judge Courtney on the roof of the Grand Tower. And last night, he was here at the film lot. Did he meet with John? Listen to John's testimony very carefully. But was the can of paint here? John, you're so young. I knew you'd come to the cold first, but you shouldn't have to resort to Peter. Alma Rule! This is precisely because he is young, but he must make sure to take care, good care of himself. Objection! However, while well, it can get a bit chilly during the time of year, it so to say. Hold it, old man. Is this really the right time to be having this argument? It's right. But John, you did well to the matter of his but please mind your watch. Let's not forget that he got the matter of you too. I know, Mom. So, where was I? Oh, In that 
phone call you lied and said you were at the hotel, correct? Why didn't you tell your mom that you were re rehearsing? If I told her that, she would have called the hotel and made them send her a taxi or something. Out of the room! Of course I would have. A child alone on the streets at that time of night. What sort of parents would allow her child to be in such a dangerous situation? These kids just don't understand how their parents feel. It goes both ways, Mr. Edward. Indeed. Now then, John, please tell us about what happened after the phone call. Uh, oh, yeah. Of course. When the call's finished, then I came back here. Oh, Was there any indication the head was about to fall? I don't know. I was focused on my rehearsal. So you forgot to turn off the heat, which led to the fire on the roof. I think you should have at least heard something. Heard something? No, I was wearing headphones, so... Headphones. Listening to the movie soundtrack helped me get into the scene. I had it on full blast, that's why I didn't hear anything. I guess you noticed your mother's in the car. I had my phone on vibrate, man. That's how I noticed. Anyways, the head had fallen. state of the body. I didn't get a good look. It's so dark. This is the like he was as a mouse. I guess John didn't really want to remember anything about the body. Is that the only reason why this comes to mind? Should I press him for more details? Always press him. He didn't get a good look. How do you know he was dead? That, uh, well... Don't you normally call for help as you see someone collapse on the ground? However, you did nothing of the sort. But, but he... he was already dead. Is that so? You seem quite certain that the person was already dead. Now is there a reason for that, I wonder? The guy was collapsed on the ground and right next to him was the fallen monster's head. I'm not stupid, it wasn't hard to imagine what happened. You can imagine whatever you want, but there was no way for you to know that he was dead. You actually checked to make sure the president was dead, didn't you? Yeah, that's right. I was scared, but I got up close to the body and checked to see if he was breathing. I thought as much. However, why would you find that? That must be a reason. Please tell me the state of the body at the time. At first, I didn't know he was dead. I would have realized sooner if there had been any blood. There wasn't a single drop, and his clothes were completely spotless. What was that about spotless clothes? Either way, he wasn't breathing. That's how I knew he was already dead. Would you please append your, those statements to your testimony? I'm gonna just keep presenting this. First it was they were too clean, now it's they're too dirty. His clothes were spotless. Y yeah, that's right. You got a problem with that, old man? John, it's painfully obvious that you are desperately trying to hide something from me. What are you going on about? I'm not hiding anything. You are hiding. Something about this yellow stain on the president's clothes, correct? Why did you leave it entirely out of your testimony? The fact that you made no mention of it only serves to cast more suspicion upon yourself. <laughs> That's because... I hope you have a convincing explanation. Did he get sick? <laughs> Judge Courtney. Allow me to explain. Why are you... The yellow stain left on the president's chest. It's almost certainly Lion Lily Pollen. Lion Lily? When I met with the president on the roof of the Grand Tower two nights ago, I brought him a bouquet of lion lilies. Lion lilies are beautiful flowers with stunning golden petals. Some of the pollen from the lilies must have gotten on the president's suit. Uh, but... I didn't see any lilies in the security footage, though. She was holding them behind her. I was wondering about the hidden hands. 
They were simply obscured by the president's booty. Why did you bring a bouquet? Hey, hey, you're keeping way too many secrets. You won't tell us why you met with the president or the reason you brought him flowers. My apologies. Uh, however, I did give him the bouquet. That much is true. Objection! But when the president's body was discovered, we didn't find any flowers. I, I honestly don't know how that could be. Ha! Hey, Miss Judge. I'm still thinking about the body double here. All your answers have been too vague. You can't say this, you don't know that. To accept flimsy testimony like that in your trials. Hey, cut it out! J John. You threw the flowers away. You threw them away? So there were flowers near the bottom when you found it. Yeah, that's right. They were right on top of the president's body. They've been crushed as flat as pancakes, though. Ah, I see. So the flowers were squashed by Muzil's head, too. And a large amount of pollen got stuck in the president's suit. Seems to be too silly. However, why did you go out of your way to dispose of the flowers? No reason. Is he protecting his mother? So John's not going to tell us anything either. I guess mother and son both have a lot of secrets, huh? Overruled! That is not true. At the very least, I can tell you why John threw away those flowers. Huh? John, you saw me leaving the house with those flowers in hand, didn't you not? Oh, I get it! John saw the flowers and thought of his mom. He then threw them away in order to protect Judge Courtney from being suspected. That's not true! You're all wrong! Which was his worst lie yet. from his mother's bouquet on top of the body. That's why he threw them away and kept silent about the body. Ha! That's a tidy little story if I've ever heard one. And what's wrong with that? I suppose you prefer untidy, messy stories, Agent Lang? Don't tell me you've forgotten already, Missy. This pup confessed that he caused the monster's head to fall last night. Oh, that's true, but... He's currently the only suspect in the president's murder. Objection! It's true that there are many reasons to suspect John. However, there's someone other than John who's far more suspicious. What'd you say? John himself was kidnapped by that very person not too long ago. And we re rescued him from the refrigerated warehouse near the harbor, pal. A refrigerated re warehouse. That's right, pal. Refrigeration wasn't turned on, so it wasn't about to freeze to death. But if he hadn't yelled out for help, we wouldn't have found him. Once the sleeping drugs wore off, he was finally able to call for help. Sleeping drugs, huh? If I recall correctly, when you were kidnapped. That's right! There was a bottle lying on the floor in the refrigerated warehouse. I think it was the same thing that was used on me not long ago. That sleepy Z stuff is super powerful. How about it, Agent Lang? John is clearly a victim. There's a mastermind at work behind the scenes in this case. I don't know anything about this so-called mastermind. You say they were here last night. I still don't know for sure yet. Ha! It's not like you to be so vague, Mr. Prosecutor. Indeed, I still don't have any evidence that ties the mastermind to this murder. Is there someone else? Is there anyone besides John who had the opportunity to murder the President? Please? 
Because that's what I thought that he was talking about before, but then he was like, oh, it was the person who kidnapped him. I was like, well, no, Blaze didn't kidnap him. He kidnapped his son. That's it. As I thought. In the end, that pup is our only suspect. Objection! Not quite. Isn't there one more suspect, Agent Lang? What's this? Didn't we prove it earlier? Last night there was one more person. Next best. You're saying he's the one who did it. Last night, John was not alone. Blaze the Best was here too. Should we consider him to be a new suspect? Blaze the Best! Killed the president! It's, an entire po it's entirely possible. Blaze the Best! Can't be. Same guy from 12 years ago. 12 years ago? He keeps popping up. Changed, all happened over 12 years ago. Back then, he and my old man were close, and our clan were president's life. And then again, here, Lang, don't tell me you ever died from 12 years ago. Blah, blah, blah. Oh, yeah, it's about time to, that we find out. Agent Lang, what happened 12 years ago? Nothing again, concern to you. On the contrary, it might just have some sort of connection with this case. Not so bad. Hm. And I suppose you have some proof, Mr. Prosecutor. Show me the evidence that there's a connection between this case and the one 12 years ago. Evidence, you say? Oh! Oh! Wait! This mentions 12 years ago. But I don't think it has anything to do with the case today. But that mentioned 12 years ago. There's also, um... This? but it was Kay and John, so maybe we could use the letter? If you don't have any evidence, then there's no point in taking talk about it. Is there any evidence that connects this case with what happened 12 years ago? This particular case... Because there's this, it's talking about 12 years ago. Uh... That's from 18 years ago. Oh, I don't know why I kept saying 7 years ago. It wasn't 7 years ago. The I have 7 incident was 18 years ago. Um... about the fact that the original series of Muzilla was 12 years ago. That's also a thing. Wait, is that really the thing? Okay, I can even either do this. This has more connection to it. The file or the letter. Take that! No. <laughs> I knew I should that. Get that thing out of my face. <laughs> The sun sets fast in Shangfa. I don't have time to waste looking at a useless job. Okay. Sorry. Look over the evidence one more time, Mr. Jordan. Wasn't there something written about 12 years ago somewhere in there? Yeah, like two things. Okay, I'm connecting Blaze to it. Because that's the thing that, that makes more sense. Yes, okay. Should have just should have just gone with it. Shouldn't have second guessed myself and tried to do crazy stuff with a TV show. <clears throat> this is a report written by Patricia Rowland to Blaze the Best Recording Nightly. Please read this part here. The thing he laid to rest near the flower bed twelve years ago. That's not all. Take a look at this as well. 
Oh, I could have done either one, apparently. So I really should have just went with my gut and presented those to you instead of being like, oh, hey, TV series 12 years ago. Though that is still bothering me. Everything's 12 years ago. Why? Why? This letter was sent to Jill Crane, who was murdered two days ago. Wait. Did, was Blaze digging up something from 12 years ago? And it was here because this is where the old series was shot? No. I don't know. Uh, this letter was sent to Jill Crane, who was murdered two days ago. Although the center is currently unknown, here it is written as follows. Please get revenge for 12 years ago. What? 12 years ago? Agent Lang, something big is happening here. Jill Crane's murder two days ago, and now the president's murder? Today? There has to be some connection there. And the key to solving it lies in what happened 12 years ago, does it not? You're asking me to reopen the old wounds of the Lang clan. Agent Lang, I beg of you. Now who's saying hold it? Who's not just now? Shifu! You guys, what are y'all doing here? They all look the same. We followed you here, Shifu. We heard that Shifu was investigating the incident from 12 years ago. You idiots. I'm not your boss anymore. Get back to your own posts. Sir, we can't do that. What'd you say? Are you disobeying my order? Shifu, we also beg of you. Reinvestigate the SS5 incident from 12 years ago. None of us could ever forget that case. We know you feel the same way, Shifu. Agent Lang, even your former subordinates desire to investigate the case. Is this the case that made him hate prosecutors? Do you think you can solve the mysteries of that case? Perhaps I can. With your help. I got it. I accept your invitation. Shifu! 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 Ah, oh, it's like the good old days. Now then, with that decided, I guess it's my turn to shine. Okay. We're investigating a case from the past, right? And guess what the best tool for that is? Little Mr. Thief. Right! If we have the case file from the past case, I can recreate it. Unfortunately, I don't have the case files. Huh? What do you mean? Access to those case files is restricted. It's been treated as highly classified information. Why is that? I don't know. It seems like there were a lot of things that they wanted to keep hidden. Even what I know. It's limited to what was published in the newspapers back then. That would not be a problem. In any case, please tell us what you know. Sure. The SS5 incident. The incident occurred on a winter day 12 years ago. It was the 10th of February. The police department in this country received a call from a group of kidnappers. They've kidnapped President Huang, they said. Kidnapped. The SS5 incident was the case of President Huang was the case of President Huang's kidnapping. They demanded a ransom of hundred million dollars. A hundred million? Wait, just how much is that? Such a large amount, just having trouble visualizing it. That night, my old man was the last person to meet with the president. They were together at the Shanghai Embassy until midnight on February 10th. After that, no one knows what the president was doing up till he was kidnapped. With the president's life at stake, the Shanghai government frantically gathered the money. After that, the ransom was delivered and the president was returned, safe and sound. So, President Huang has been the president since 12 years ago. That's really amazing. Well, being in office for so long is just a small part of how amazing that man is. Lang seemed a bit happy when he said that. And what happened to the kidnappers? Well, a top-secret covert investigation was carried out. Then a secret trial was held. A trial? Does that mean the suspect was caught? The suspect was Patricia Rowland. And then the reason you came to the prison a few days ago. Yeah, I was put on extended leave from Interpol. So I decided to go back and reinvestigate what happened 12 years ago. 
First, I had to get a look at the face of my target. So the trial 12 years ago ended with a not guilty verdict. Yeah. Back then, my old man was in charge of every aspect of the president's security. He took responsibility for the kidnapping and was relieved of his post as bodyguard. But he continued to investigate this regular police officer until he finally found the culprit. It was none other than Patricia Rowland. There was no way she could be innocent. However, the result was a not guilty verdict. In the end, the case went unsolved. Crusted both body and soul, my old man resigned from the police. What was the basis for arresting Pol What was the basis for arresting Patricia Rowland? There was a lot of evidence. At least, that's what I think. But I can't see those documents for myself. So, that's where my story ends. What should we do? With only this much information, even Little Thief would have a hard time producing a recreation. Is there really nothing we can do? Looks like you could use some help. Who's that? Francisca. And Mr. Shields, too! We finished up with the trial and finally managed to catch up with you guys. Here, take this. Take that! This is... Yeah! It's the case files for the SS-5 incident, sir! The witness was killed. When Roland mentioned 12 years ago during the trial, it caught my interest. I looked into it immediately and got in touch with Interpol. I expected him less friendly than this guy. Let's look over the documentation. Here we go. President Zheng Zhang, Zhuang Hong, was kidnapped on February 10th, 12 years ago. The kidnappers demanded the ransom of $100 million. Dai Long Lang confirmed that on the evening of the incident, the president was at the Zhang embassy until midnight. The prosecutor placed the best suspect in Joshua Rowland. Don't get the wrong idea, Miles Edgeworth. I didn't prepare these documents for you, the former prosecutor. I did it for the sake of investigator talking, taking up the case his father left behind. Sis. But I thought information of the SS5 incident was restricted to the public. And that restriction was placed by the prosecutor in charge of the case. Blaze to best. Blaze to best was the prosecutor in charge. Him. However, as a result of the trial just now, Blaze's authority has been revoked. It's all thanks to his son. Sebastian. There's Sebastian's new new song. I love it. By bringing down his father, the door to the past case can be opened. The door to this past case has been opened, sorry. <clears throat> Prosecutor DeBest is currently wrapping things up in Patricia Rowland's trial. He told me to relay this message to you. Leave Pops and his cohorts to me. You guys just take care of the case on your end. Hey, it's become quite reliable right before our very eyes. Truly. Alrighty then! This is perfect! Now that we have the files, just leave the recreation to me. Indeed. Well then, let us begin. According to these documents, it appears that the incident took place right in front of the Tower Plaza. Yes, he's digging up something. He was digging up something from that case. And let's head to the plaza right away. Okay, would you please activate the little Mr. Thief? Right! With these case files, recreating everything should be a snap. Where should I start? Well, indeed. According to these documents, it seems there was a witness kidnapping the president. A freelance journalist by the name of Jack Cameron. However, you happened to be in the wrong place at the wrong time, and it was murdered by the creditors. So that would mean the place he saw the president at was here. Here? At the Grand Tower? No, the Grand Tower was only built around here, okay. Before that, the place contained mostly old abandoned buildings. However, 12 years ago, this place was. Ha! <laughs> now you're finally talking about some stuff that I know! Yeah, 12 years ago, at this very spot, 
is the Happy Family Home. An orphanage? What's that, pal? It's a place where children who had lost their parents could live. Is that where the where the kids got went? Is that where the kids went? Or to put it simply, it was an orphanage. The missing kids. Oh no, because there would be documentation. So the president was kidnapped at that orphanage. And the head of the facility at this time was Patricia Roland. <laughs> of course, because she's the warden of everything. Apparently, Roland always referred to it as her help. It seems that suspicion would naturally fall upon her. Patricia Roland blazed the best. And President Wong. The darkness that remains from the SS5 incident still casts a shadow on the present case. Okay, I'd like you to input the investigation data from Jack Cameron's murder case. We can probably assume that he was killed by one of the kidnappers. So if we solve the murder case, we'll know who the kidnappers were, right? Precisely. I'm counting on you. Is she gonna give her speech? Nope, just gonna do it. Is this? Everything's green. I've come to express these reactions. This is a recreation of the grounds of this facility that stood here 12 years ago, based on the documents from the police investigation. I recreated the scene to show what it looked like when the police arrived at 7 a.m. the next day. It appears a fair amount of snow piled up here. Yeah, I heard that the footprints in the snow were prime pieces of evidence. Snow fell during the day. No, only fell before the crime took place. Which means the footprints wouldn't have been erased by any further snow. We must make sure to pay close attention to these footprints. Is that what those were? Oh, okay. Yeah, what's with, uh... It looks like there's multiple here. Oh, is it like his footprints went this way and then the killer was this way in the back? Seems to lead to and from the body. Yeah, okay. These footprints were believed to be the culprits. The shoe size is about size 7, and that's fairly average. It seems we won't be able to tell who the culprit is from these footprints. These footprints are stuck near the body. They must, be Mr. they must be Mr. Cameron's footprints. He sure has some big feet. They look like a size 11. Data, the shoes match these footprints. So, this is the eyewitness of the person's kidnapping, Jack Cameron. What exactly did he witness? I've recreated the state of the body of the body based on the photos taken by the police. It appears he was- oh, it appears he was struck in the head from behind. The murder weapon was a brick, right? It looks like the ones from the Scarga. The blood that flowed from his head splattered all over the surrounding areas. Or surroundings. Here, take this. It's Mr. Cameron's autopsy report. Blood to death. means a stolen treasure. Okay, you stop making things up. So, this flower seems to be of a different variety from the ones growing nearby. Well then, why is it in a place like this? This bothers me a little. We should examine the flower by itself after this. 
I knew it! Someone must have stolen this from somewhere and brought it here. Okay. And in the language of flowers, this means an angry prosecutor. I was uh, noticing that there are three flower beds and there were three uh, hoof marks, like the digging, dig, 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 digging, digged, dig, 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 the dug up things that Blaze is doing. Was he looking for the flower beds? Did they bury things in the flower beds? Possibilities? I assume this is the victim's cell phone. That's right. Um, apparently Mr. Cameron gave his eyewitness testimony over his cell phone. What do you mean by over the cell phone? After Cameron found the president, it seems that he called his girlfriend. But she didn't answer the phone. Oh, but she didn't answer the phone, so Cameron left a message on her answering machine. I think Lane talked about it the time, sorry. Tape is in the case files too. You wanna hear it? Please. Hello, Jill. Are you asleep already? Jill? As in Jill Crane? Oh boy. I'm in front of the facility now, but something's not right. President Huang is here of all places. And what's more? Crap, the light just went off. I can barely see a thing now. Can't believe it, but it almost looks like he's been kid being kidnapped. I thought I'd let you know. Ooh, I think we just heard his death. What was that sound at the end? It seems he was attacked while he was still on the phone. Agent Lang, may I ask, what was the name of Mr. Cameron's beloved? I'm pretty sure I heard her name was Jill Crane. So it was true. Did you say Jill? This is why she was seeking revenge for twelve long years. The feelings of the items Miss Crane inherited from her beloved. to his act revenge on the conductor. But Miss Crane tried to get revenge on Blaze, right? She may have wanted to get revenge on him for covering up the kidnapping case. Or perhaps she thought Blaze himself was the kidnapper. President Huang is here, and it looks like he's being kidnapped. I thought I'd let you know. Why is he letting him her know that the president was there? Like, what was? Why was he there? Why was he looking for him? This is the brick that was used as a murder weapon. Oh! Oh! Yes! Okay. No, I think my logic is sound about the footprints because if we're still doing logic. We're gonna investigate the flower beds in a second. And he's gonna be like, oh, there are three flower beds, and I'm gonna link it with three footprints. Yes. You can find bricks like this all over the garden. They must have used one of them as a weapon. Jack Cameron was a freelance journalist. He was killed because he was just a distance kidnapping. What really stands out in the recreation is giving me the heebie jeebies. According to the autopsy report, he was struck in the back of the head with a brick. Indeed, it's likely that the killer approached Mr. Cameron from behind. Hmm, it's written quite something in his right hand. It's also written in the case files. Um, it seems he was holding onto a button. Button? Did he tear it off the corporate's clothes? That's impossible, he died immediately. And he seemed to not know that the hit was coming because he was like in the middle of the call. So that doesn't make sense. Do you take any pictures? The victim was carrying a camera. Oh, according to the case files, it seems he only managed to take a single photo. Um, here it is. 
this is. The snowman is missing his eye. Oh! That's the button. Because that's his handprint from taking the taking the button eye. Is some other president? He's being held at gunpoint. This must be the secret victim witness. So the person in the coat must be the kidnapper. Indeed, it seems like some sort of disguise. The logic of Agent Lang's father is correct. And this person should be Patricia Rowland. But why is there only one photo? Perhaps he was killed before he could take any more. I think I'm done. So much joke. Okay. So I'm gonna logic out the uh, flower beds. And then there should be a snowman around here, right? No? Yes? Oh, poor melted snowman. This has mostly melted, but it appears to be snowman. It has a scarf and a hat. It must have melted since it was dressed so warmly. Poor thing has even lost one of its buttons that was used for its eyes. The temperature reaches its lowest point at dawn. Perhaps it would have frozen later. <laughs> Not so fast, Mr. Edgeworth. Once a snowman melts, even if it freezes up again, it becomes an ice man instead of a snowman. What? Is that what she was expecting me to say? Flower bed. Aha! There it is. These three are to the left. And I don't know. I still don't know whether you can see my mouse. But these three to the left is where he was digging. For sure. According to the data, this facility has three gardens. And each of these gardens contain three flower beds. Yes. There it is. The way this flower bed is have I seen this arrangement somewhere before? Yes, you have. Since it was during the winter, there were no flowers in bloom. What a shame. What's this yellow flower? Huh? Why is there a single flower here? What was that thing about the flower bed? No. Uh, the thing he laid to rest from the flower bed 12 years ago. We must retrieve it. It looks like one of these flowers, by the way, too. And that is a lion lily. It's a very rare type of lily. Did you say lion lily? That's the flower Miss Courtney gave to the president! What's it doing here? Could it be just a coincidence? If I recall, the lion lily originates from Asia. In the language of flowers, it means the bond between parent and child. Was Cameron one of the missing kids? I never knew you were so familiar with flowers. That much is common sense. You're simple, simply lacking in your studies, Miles Edgeworth. I feel like that's important information that I should, uh, that I should write down. That's okay. I've been waiting for this. <laughs> I've been waiting for this moment. <laughs> Perhaps this is the true nature of the monster's footprints. True nature? Compare the positions of the three footprints and the three flower beds on the left. Ah! simply must retrieve the thing that he put in front of the flower bed. Yeah. The exposed areas of dirt match the areas where the flower beds were. So Blaze dug holes in front of where each of the three flower beds used to be. Exactly. Now why would he do such a thing? Because what Trisha told him to. Believe me, a piece of evidence that tells us why. Your 
support for Patricia Rowland for Blaze the Best. It said that something was laid to rest in front of the flower bed. So Blaze was following Miss Rowland's instructions to dig it up. But why would he dig up three holes? The report didn't state which of the three flower beds the victim was in front of. Oh, so Blaze didn't know exactly where to dig. That's why he had to dig up all three spots. Most likely, yes. I'm sure Blaze himself was none too happy about that. He went through all that trouble. I wonder what he was trying to dig up. Anything you wish. You have my heartfelt thanks for you for bringing John back. Oh, even the thought of him not coming back makes me. Hey, old man, don't bully my mom! No, that wasn't my intention. Ooh, look at him go! Mommy's little knight in shining armor. He's so cool. It's not like that. Quit blabbering. Stupid stuff about me. John, please wait. May I proceed, Mr. Edgeworth? My actions were unbecoming of one who calls herself the servant of the goddess of law. I won't ask for forgiveness. However, I... Judge Corby, I am not so well acquainted with the goddess of law as you are. However, isn't that goddess also a mother of other gods? <laughs> the law makes exceptions for extenuating circumstances. It understands a mother's heart. I say perhaps your goddess simplifies that is with you more than you think. Mr. Edgeworth... I don't get it. What the heck are you two blabbering about? It's okay, John. I don't have a clue either. <laughs> so how'd the trial go? <laughs> Seems the dust has settled on the day, of, day one of Patricia Rowland's trial. Yes, while a decision has yet to be reached, I would say a guilty verdict is quite likely. I'm sure a thorough investigation into her connection with Blaze will be conducted as well. After seeing Sebastian today, I know nobody can put our faith in him. Just like Kay, Sebastian is also in the midst of training for the future ahead. Hmm, I see. When you say it like that, I guess we have more in common than I thought. I said a few mean things to him, so the next time we meet, I'd like to apologize to him. I'm sure he will get your opportunity. But for now... Yes, at present, solving this case is our top priority. Okay. Are you going to talk about these flowers, though? Maybe I can present the flowers, because that flower is at the flower bed too. I suppose you'd like me to tell you what exactly took place two nights ago and my reason for meeting with the president. Indeed, I'm sure you yourself understand the importance of this matter. Yes, however, I cannot tell you yet, now at least. She's determined to keep her heart closed. And without the ability to break the locks of her heart, I have no choice but to give up for now. Mr. Edgeworth, may I just say one thing? This case was very nice to hear because John tried to cover for me. I would like to take this time to offer my deepest apologies. Do not worry yourself. My logic won't be swayed by a child's lies. Besides, I'm not so tactless as to condemn a child for trying to protect his mother. Besides, you were saying? <laughs> no, hate no mind. Mother and child, huh? Mother and child. We can talk to the child. Can we talk to the child? What do you want? John, I'd like you to tell me the exact details of your kidnapping. You were kidnapped at the garbage pickup area, right? Why'd you go there? You don't have to act as a guilty twin. I can just talk to the old man directly. So he says, looks like he's finally starting to wear up to you. I went to the garbage pickup to throw away the flowers and found Nearby, and I thought it'd be harder to find there than if I just tossed it in a trash can. I went there last night, too. The gate was locked. And that's why you went there again today to dispose of them. Yeah, but when I got there, someone suddenly grabbed me from behind. And used Sleepy Z on you, right? Catching Z's is now super easy with Sleepy Z. Even though she was also a victim to it, she seems to have taken a liking to the slogan. Whoever grabbed me was really strong. That's all I know. I have no idea who it was. I see. So that's what happened. After the drugs wore off, did you notice anything about your surroundings? 
Those drugs are brought to you by Sleepy Z. Catching Z's is now sleep super easy with Sleepy Z. It was kind of cold when I woke up. I was in a dark, empty room. Boxes of foreign writing on them were lying around. So I figured I was in a warehouse. The whole place was like a giant refrigerator. It was a commercial warehouse. That's right. Storms rescued things to the collective efforts to pay and detect gum shoe. Since it was still a bit cold, the cooling unit's power must not be cut for too long. For some reason, they didn't think to take my phone, so... I used it to call for help. I see. In any case, it's good that you were safe and sound. Jump. I don't need your fake sympathy, old man. What an incorrigible child. <laughs> He's just like a certain someone I know. <laughs> you talking about me? <laughs> Time. This door! I remember seeing it from somewhere. Really? Of course you would. It looks exactly like the Grand Tower door we saw earlier. But this is a recreation from 12 years ago. That means the store has been here since then. It seems when the Grand Tower was built, they decided to reuse the door rather than destroy it. It's like the old saying goes, discover something new by heating up something old. Oh, it seems that she's such a super correct meaning. If you're using a microwave to do it, don't heat it for over five minutes. Hey, buddy. The seed short does a chill in your bones. Uncle Ray needs some hot babe to keep him warm. Wow. <laughs> Could you please try to be a little more serious? No, oh, if that's what Kate wants, I guess I have no choice. You're worse than Larry. Miles, this is where I'll begin. Isn't that right? Yes, I feel that's, just, that's the case. What was Patricia in place is true. There's so many mysteries yet to be solved. Indeed, it's just as you say. Particularly the mystery of what will happen to K Ray's love. Isn't <laughs> K Ray's love? <laughs> Did he just couple name them? Isn't it suspenseful? Not even a little. You just couldn't resist which of Mr. Shields. Why can't you ever stay serious for more than a minute? I think he's too many incapable of staying serious for that long. Also, you are way too old for her. Stop it. Stop being weird. Three flower beds. Snow. It's been playing. Well, what's the matter? Something strange. I was unable to read the SS5 incident case files until now. Since Blaze had all the access to the information, we restricted. That's right. And yet I feel like I've seen this exact scene somewhere before. What do you mean? Where did I see this? I can just remember. What was even thought? I should leave him alone for a while. And then I will proceed to question him. After the SS5 incident, the president completely changed. I felt like his trust had been betrayed. It's only natural. He cut off all ties with the Lane Clan, putting an end to their deepest bond of trust. My old man wanted to at least apologize in some way. So he tried to go see the president more times than I can count. Of course, the president refused to meet with him. He wouldn't even give him the time of day. I don't know if it was from the bodyguards, but there were times he'd come back all beaten up. Me standing around talking about the past doesn't do jack, does it? I shall be the judge of that. For now, just keep telling us what you know. You're still as tactless as ever. Well, I figured you'd say, say as much. Sorry, buddy, I need to know information. The fall of my old man was also the fall of the Lang clan. A family that failed to protect the president. And that's what we became. My old man started to investigate the case like he was possessed. Could someone so driven by obsession truly conduct a proper investigation? Sheesh, you really don't pull your punches, Mr. Prosecutor. I don't think I blindly trusted in this investigation just because of he's my old man. His investigation was meticulous down to the last detail. Apparently, he even conducted a thorough interview with each and every kid at the orphanage. He interviewed every child. I wonder how fruitful these results were. That's interesting. Scruffy, don't you dare say a word. I'm warning you. Uh, Mr. Edgeworth, please help me, sir. Where's this detective come to? It's about the story behind the SS5 incident, sir. Even though Blaze may have lost, lo lost his authority, there's no way he can get co confidential documents this quickly. I don't 
I'll be curious, though. I made a few calls and asked around. And I found out that Ms. Von Karma used all sorts of forceful tactics to... Scruffy, I thought I warned you. I... You've done a lot for us, Francisco. I promise I will bring this to an end. Would you look at that? Those folks have done turn green. Maybe they're sick some. But their clothes are green too. Well, I'll be. Their clothes are all green too. I reckon this ain't no ordinary disease. You picked up on something good. Looks like we're talking to it. We're taking it to the next level. Yes, Chief! It looks like there's no way we'll be getting it work. Not that I have any desire to. Well then. It's a swing decoration with the face of an elephant. It looks like it has some kind of motor attached to the other side of the elephant. There's one thought that has crossed my, the minds of every top class swinger. If only I could do a full 360. With that power, motor roting, rotating the swing, that dream can finally be achieved. Rotating with a motor. But wouldn't that be dangerous? Mr. Edgeworth, you can't fulfill your dreams unless you're willing to take some risks. That's not the real problem here. Okay, I think it's time to go into logic. Again. But he didn't want to dig up the brick. Because the brick was already seen. The murder weapon was there. What is... Bear-shaped igloo is both cute and scary at the same time. I hereby declare this a bear glue. Hmm. It looks as though this igloo could fit through only three people inside. Yeah, I bet you could live up to three years in this bear glue. Three years. What about the summertime? The bit the igloo would melt. Mr. Edgeworth, say that again! Say that one more time! The igloo would melt. Shifu, I know it's not my place, but I have a request. Please, do a roll call. Just like old times. Just like old times, huh? Yeah. Wouldn't work. I guess I have no choice. Roll call! One! I'm sorry. A roll call with one person is really lacking. That's nonsense. It's got nothing to do with numbers. Even though you're the only one here. Oh, I'm sorry. I don't know why I'm speaking in Edgeworth's voice. That's nonsense! It has nothing to do with numbers. Even though you're the only one here, the pack is always won, right? You think it's lacking, then howl loud enough to make up for the rest of the pack. Roll call. One! One! One. One. That's man. Is he on the verge of tears? Okay. I wonder if I can present anything to him. If I've been that occurred 12 years ago, I guess I should tell you everything. My old man failed to protect the country's number one VIP. Because of that, he put everything on the line in his hunt for the culprit after the incident. During that time, my old man was like a lifeless ghost. If he had just caught his prey, he would have been able to forgive himself. But that shrew Roland, she managed to get away scot-free. My old man couldn't repay his debt to the president, nor could he unravel the case. So began the nightmare that our wolf pack still hadn't woken up from to this day. Zadfied. Miss Clan's honor was damaged. Young Lang's heart was wounded just as badly. Agent Lang, I can sympathize with your father's regrets. However, all we can do is perform a thorough investigation of this case. I hope your words will serve as some kind of clue. That's all you have to say. Sheesh. All that talking was a real waste of time. Yes, it was. Okay. <sighs> okay. I'm... I don't see why. But we'll try. Yeah, okay. That's what I thought. It doesn't make sense. I can't see the clear connection between those two pieces of evidence either. There's nothing. 
So what am I missing? I could also talk to them. So it's gotta be something to present. Crush it with my gavel. No! <laughs> because the law does not permit this gavel to be used seriously. I'm quite serious about it, though. Playground toys are modeled after a hare and a tortoise, like from the fable. The tortoise and the hare competed in a race, and in the end, the hare lost. And now for something completely different. It's time for a cake quiz. Why did the hare lose? There are three choices. I already know the answer. It's because the hare took a nap. One, the hare's favorite shoes were stolen by the Yadagarasu. Two, the tortoise trained with the Yadagarasu until it became faster than the hare. Three, unbeknownst to the two animals, the Anagarasu stole the victory from the shadows. Those are my only choices. It's too hard for you? Okay, I'll give you a hint. It starts with the... She, she wants me to pick number three. Okay, he's gonna be silly. I've already examined the doors. That's apparently that was something. What's happening here? Philip has to be burnt. According to the files, it seems there was a fire on the evening of the incident. Fire? Um, let's see here. Huh? It says that one of the children at the orphanage spilled kerosene and set it on fire as a prank. <laughs> oh my gosh. I guess that kid had far too much energy. And thanks to that, we can't make out any of the footprints in the main hall. Oh, well, that's. There it is. <laughs> We've learned pretty much all that we can about the situation at the time of the murder. Oh, in that case, is there another scene you'd like to recreate? Yes, would you do the honors? I'd like to recreate the scene when the victim witnessed the president's kidnapping. Right, okay, I thought she was going to do that. that scene. Right, I'll recreate the scene based on Mr. Cameron's photo. This is another long one, guys. I think I'm about to lose my uh, recording. Mr. Cameron is standing in the middle of the flower beds. Oh, sorry, that's it. Mr. Cameron is standing in the middle of the flower beds. And the president is his kidnapper are standing on the ground. The oh, man based his initial investigation on this man's eyewitness testimony. As a result, it led him to believe that the kidnapping and the facility were related. And that's how he came to suspect the head of the wolf from which Patricia Rowland. Yeah. When Court Blaze the best treated this testimony as if it meant nothing. Why would he do that? The president and his kidnapper were no, not standing inside the orphanage grounds. So a connection between the orphanage and the kidnapping was difficult to prove. I see. It's not like they were seen inside the orphanage, after all. No matter how much evidence detectives we gather in the crime scene, 
It doesn't mean squat if the prosecutor won't use it in court. Please invest in some kind of connection with Patricia Rowland. Figure they have some kind of deal going on. In other words, you think that Blaze was one of the kidnappers. However, your father was convinced that Patricia Rowland was the culprit. Your father was a highly capable investigator, I presume? Might you have some other basis for his conclusions besides the eyewitness testimony? Yeah, I figure he did, but I have no idea what it was. My old man never really talked much about this case. Understandably. Jin Lang's father, Dai Long Lang, President Wang's most trusted confidant. The truth we discovered was suppressed by police to past. First, we must find that hidden truth. Oh, I can change the recreation. I'm all dressed in time, so I can every suspicious looking nook and cranny. Can I deduce with the eye? Um, about the snowman. When we recreated the scene where Mr. Cameron was killed, it already melted. Its scarf was all soggy, and one of its button eyes was missing. Indeed, at this stage, it appears that most of its original form is still intact. Although there's one spot that looks like so Poor thing, I bet someone not some naughty kid must have plucked it off. Although from a thief's perspective, that kid does have some problems. Was it plucked off by one of the children of the orphanage? No. Perhaps. It was taken by an entirely different person altogether. Yes it was. Deduce. Snowman. Wouldn't you say it's missing something? Its right eye is missing! Precisely. And what's more, that missing eye happens to be in our possession. The button that Mr. Cameron was holding on to! It's got the exact same design as the snowman's left eye! If we assume this button was indeed the snowman's eye, a huge contradiction arises. If this button is the snowman's eye, what contradiction arises? of the victim? But that doesn't make sense because he took a picture from that far away. None of these make sense. Unless there's like an automatic camera snap. button is the snowman's eye. What kind of fiction arises? Is this assuming that he grabbed it before he died? It is... Or like right before he died? Like he held onto it as he was falling? So location of the victim? The victim was holding onto this button. Furthermore, the button was stained with blood. In other words, he grabbed the button after he was attacked. For example, if we were to picture it this way, being struck in the back of the head, Mr. Cameron lost his balance. As he was falling, he reached out his hand toward the nearby snowman. However, it could not support his weight, and did, he collapsed while still grasping the button. Huh? Th that means... Wait, that means that the victim was already dead when the picture was taken. Mr. Cameron was near the snowman when he was attacked? Indeed, at the very least, he was Quite clear that he would not have been able to reach it from his current position. But Mr. Cameron's footprints only lead toward the flower bed. Can we be certain that these footprints really are Mr. Cameron's? It seems we'll need to investigate them one more time. Understood. I'll recreate the time the body was discovered. See, one more time. should match up with Mr. Cameron's shoes, right? Let's inspect them again. Okay. Nice footprints. 
Are they really Mr. Cameron's? They're from size 11 shoes, and these huge footprints match up with Mr. Cameron's shoes. No matter how you look at it, they're moving steadily toward the center of the black flower beds. But when Mr. Cameron was attacked, he grabbed the crossing from the snowman. Even with a great thief's peak human condition, your arm just can't stretch it far. Conditioning, sorry. Let alone an ordinary civilian. It would be completely impossible. The footprints come from the shoes worn by the victim. Just as the case file says. However, does that mean Mr. Cameron was the owner of his shoes? We should re-examine Mr. Cameron's shoes. Okay. Oh, the shoes look large. These shoes should match the footprints. However... Hmm? These shoes. It seems like they were not the ones originally worn by the victim. What do you mean? If you look closely, you'll see the laces were tied up strangely. And the size doesn't seem to fit quite right either. That would mean these huge footprints leading up to the victim's feet were most likely made by someone other than the victim. So then the footprints leading to and from the victim's head must be Mr. Cameron's. No, not necessarily. They seem a little too small to be the victim's footprints. So none of the footprints are his? Then which way did Mr. Cameron walk from? It's quite simple. The victim did not walk here on his own accord, but rather, he was carried here after he was murdered by the corpse. The question now becomes, where was he killed and carried from? Perhaps it was near the snowman after all. Change it up. Yeah, what's up? I'm gonna recreate the scene based on Mr. Cameron's eyewitness testimony. Yes. Moment of the incident where the president was being kidnapped. Recreated the scene. Here we go. Okay. Let's see if I have to investigate anymore. It's the one-eyed snowman. He goes all the way up to my shoulders. At this size, it's a gigaton class. You got a hand to the kids who made this. I was hoping for some more diverse information instead of just its size. A bucket hat, button eyes, and a wool scarf. It's fully equipped. All that's left is to knock it down with countless punches and kicks. I was hoping for some more objective information instead of what you'd like to do to it. just before he was kidnapped at gunpoint. The president was... Oh, the president was strong. But there's no way he'd win against a gun. And Mr. Cameron photographed this scene from the middle of the flower beds. Something highly unnatural about this. It would have been impossible for him to grab the snowman's button from there. Indeed. We should examine the state of the other creation. Yeah, we've already taken care of that. Um... About this guy here. Wait, am I walking through him? I can, I can walk right through him. Nice, okay. Cameron took a photo of the president from the spot. And he also called Mrs. Kramer, right? At that time, the killer was already behind him. Holding the murderous brick. Oh, holding the murderous brick. Okay. To the logic. Okay, so my question is these, like, did it come from the faculty grounds as a question now? The body was moved and we know that. Um, my other thing was maybe the kidnapper and what did Blaze dig up go together because it's talking about them being partners in crime and should giving him instruction. Oh, man. Alright, alright, fine, 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 fine. I'm sorry. I am sorry. Um... Apparently we'll take care of the uh, position of the body later. <laughs> if 
we suppose that Blaze was one of the kidnappers. It becomes more likely that what he dug up yesterday is connected to the abduction. Ah! What is it? I figured it out! It was treasure! Treasure! Couldn't Blaze have dug up the ransom money? The $100 million ransom. Buried in the ground until the heat had died down. Certainly possible. I know, right? And so then, whose blood is this? Just now, the state of the recreation has changed completely. Regarding this blood stain, the time the body was discovered seen was probably being greatly impacted as a result. And let's go check it out right away. Operations are ready. Since the state of the recreation has changed once again, I should press the Y button instead of change recreation. Okay, alright, okay, fine. Oh, because, uh,. It's gonna change to them and him being at the front. Okay. So go ahead and change the recreation. Change it to him being at the whatever. Okay, so the problem is that this blood isn't. change it. Do we have to examine the footprints here? Footprints here to the lead tune from the body. These footprints are believed to be the culprits. Seven is average. Can't tell who the culprit is. Mr. Cameron's body was moved. If we can consider the Boston he was holding on to. It's highly likely that he was killed near, near the snowman. We should take a closer look. has become a sad sight to look at. It can't be helped. Snow and ice both melt away with time. I see it, by the way. I see what I'm supposed to click. <laughs> Just like the mystery of the cases you solved, Mr. Edgeworth. As time passes, those mysteries melt away while you continue to keep your cool. I do have less time working my brain trying to solve those mysteries during the case. You make it look so easy. Huh? There's a brick missing here. Aha, there it is. Logic! Logic! <laughs> The rest are all in order. It's a strange thing this one's missing. No, it isn't. It's the murder weapon! Brick, brick. Perhaps the missing brick was the one used at the murder weapon. Is that it? Ah, yeah! It seems to be just the right size to fit in the gap perfectly. Too. It's definitely by the snowman. As I thought, it seems the murder actually occurred near the snowman. Both the button Mr. Cameron was holding and the murder weapon came from there. Indeed. Also, if we assume that the killer picked up the brick near the snowman and then tried to sneak up behind Mr. Cameron. Oh, Mr. Cameron totally would have seen the person picking up the brick! Exactly. Okay, please update the recreation. Mr. Cameron was not in the middle of the flower beds, but near the snowman. Okay, I'm on it! Yeah! 
God, that's... <laughs> that's a problem. This is just... this is... No matter how you look at it, this is strange. All the people involved in the case are gathered in the same place. Did we make a mistake here or something? One piece of evidence this recreation is based on is odd. If I had to choose which piece of evidence, it's fake. It's the picture. It's, uh, this. Because he had to have been killed before this picture was taken. Really taken by Mr. Cameron. Eh? What do you mean? We've proven that whoever killed Mr. Cameron also moved the body. For what reason would they have to deliberately leave this body? Perhaps the culprit wanted to falsify the scene that Mr. Cameron witnessed. And that's why they took a fake photo? They made the president stand under the streetlight and took a photo of Cameron's camera. It would have been quite simple. Now that you mention it, Mr. Cameron's camera only had one photo on it, right? Indeed. In all likelihood, the original roll of film had been removed from the camera. And after loading a new roll of film with the camera, the fake photo was taken. I see! So this photo must have been taken after Mr. Cameron was killed, right? Absolutely. Exactly. This was not the scene that Mr. Cameron actually witnessed. It's likely that this photo is forged evidence. Then where did Mr. Cameron witness the president and his kidnapper? The photo isn't the only piece of evidence that indicates what Mr. Cameron witnessed. Ah, oh, the testimony he left in the answering machine! Precisely. We should listen to the recording one more time and confirm what he said. Where else could the president and his kidnapper be? In this, uh... burnt area? Take that! Mr. Cameron said this on the answering machine. The light just went off. I can barely see a thing now. There are only two places here where the lights are broken. The light by the orphanage! Okay, could you please update the recreation? Roger! This is... So the kidnapper was near the orphanage. Indeed. With this, we've shown them the connection between the orphanage and the kidnapper. So that's why they moved the body and took a fake photo to create false testimony in order to remove any suspicion toward the orphanage in court. Seems like it. Hmm. With this, the state of the recreation has changed completely. The time the body was discovered scene is probably being greatly impacted as a result. Then let's go check it out right away. Preparations are ready. Since the state of the recreation has changed once again, we should press the Y button to open. All right. So we want the body then again. We're just gonna go back and forth, I guess. See, I didn't do that of this at all in the last game. Like you could, there was a thing where it was like, oh, I'll do this one and this one. Um. Originally, Mr. Cameron's body was here, in order to be consistent with the fake photo. He was moved to the center of the flower beds. And then the footprints going back and forth from the body, could they be... Indeed. There's only one possibility at the moment. These footprints were probably left when the body was moved to the flower beds. Okay. The footprints here seem to be leading from the from the body. Six or sorry, six, uh, seven. Okay, that doesn't tell us anything. What about this flower? Flower bed. Wait, it's 
cut off. Is that weird? The blood spatter above the snow. It certainly was a substantial amount. It's almost as if the ladder was actually killed here. But Mr. Cameron should have been attacked near the snow. Exactly. In that case, this blood must belong to someone else. What? But the police report said this was Mr. Cameron's blood. The one in charge of this case was blazed the best. It would have been simple for him to falsify that information. But wouldn't it be faster to just clean up the bloodstains rather than falsify the information? He wouldn't be able to do that. Think about it. Blaze knew that Mr. Cameron's body would be discovered here. In which case, the forensic department would naturally become involved. Ah, oh, luminal reaction! They would have discovered it with the power of science. <laughs> the power of science, as Emma would say! Precisely, it would have been difficult to completely erase the traces of the blood. However, falsifying the results of the blood test would be much easier in comparison. You would just have to switch the results from the forensic report. Ah, oh, what a bummer. Knowing those documents I've read were falsified. It looks like Mr. Cameron's clothes were completely soaked in blood. If the blood scattered here got into Cameron's clothes... That would mean the whole time the blood stains here had not dried yet. I see, so then this certain somebody's blood was splattered here just a short while before Mr. Cameron was murdered. Is it the president? Indeed. That's exactly right. However, if that's the case, what new contradiction arises in this recreation? Clear contradiction. Huh? You mean this bloodstain? Do you see how this bloodstain is broken up by the remains of the fire? This is proof that the fire occurred after the blood had scattered around the area. But I thought the fire occurred before the murder. Seems that information is suspect as well. If the fire had broken out after the murder, then the child who started the fire should have seen the body and the bloodstains. Why then did they not come forward as a witness? It's likely that they would have put Blaze at a great disadvantage. Guess we'll need to investigate this fire in more detail. Hey, you! Yes, sir! There should be some records of the fire in the police department, under a different case file. I want you to bring me every last investigation report about the fire. Understood, Shifu! No, one more thing. What is it, sir? Contact the house of Lang Chen Fa. There should be evidence from the case in my old man's room. What do you mean? Just remembered. My recognize the scene. A long time ago I saw a picture of my old man's room in my old man's room. There's a drawing resembling the scene. What did you say? However, I think it looked like something of a child. A child? And the office may have been behind the fire. There should still be somewhere in my old man's room. Have not sitting over here. Understood, sir! Well, this is getting interesting. Shifu, I'm back! Brought the info on the fire the kid started and the photo of the drawing of your in your father's office. And also, I've been waiting for this. Hurry up and hand him over. And also what? Information held by Edge Lang's father. It's Dogen. And there's the flowers. And the stuffed toy. Yeah, see it has the um the lion lilies. And the stuffed toy. And then that's definitely Dogen. This is it! It's exactly what I remember. This is a picture drawn by the child depicting the night of the incident. It sure looks like it was drawn with the child's touch. Kinda looks a little, uh, 
either Picasso or like Egyptian with the one eye. <laughs> As I thought, the one who drew this is most likely the child who started the fire. Shifu! Yes, please, tell us what you're gonna say. What now? Sorry, but it's gonna have to wait. Hey, Mr. Prosecutor. Why do you think my old man had this? Perhaps he obtained it during the course of his investigation into the incident. Although I don't know why he concealed it. Agent Lang, might I be able to see the de details of the fire? Yeah, sure. Allow me to read the post haste. The boy who started the fire snuck out of bed in the night to the incident. It seems this boy went missing several days later. What? Don't tell me that he went to something he shouldn't have. That's horrible! He was only a child after all! Well, I'd hate for that to be the case. We can't roll out the possibility entirely. Yeah. Apparently, the boy left some stuff behind the orphanage. He was taking his evidence. What's this? But that's... What is that doing here? Well, the picture shows why it's there. Mr. Prosecutor, do you recognize this? Yes. I know one piece of evidence that's related to it. Because he saw it in the picture. I'm shocked he's shocked. Take that! I don't know what it's doing here. But isn't that the missing horn from this Musilla doll? No way. You mean this came from the president's? You know of it? Yeah, I've noticed the president kept it close by as decoration. I always thought it was strange how one of the horns was missing. If you twist the horn, the stall will play back any previously recorded audio. So if we put the missing horn back in place, we might be able to hear a different recording. Indeed. It is possible. The doll is currently on the 51st floor of the Grand Tower. Hey, you! You heard that, right? Yes, sir. I'll be right back. Wait, but what did you want to tell us? Shifu, I've got it. The mighty Mozilla doll. Well done. Give it to the prosecutor over there. If we insert the horn out of the orphanage into the doll. It's a perfect fit! Well, can you hear anything? Mr. Huang, it's Amy. It's been a while. I saw the news that you would be coming to this country. I was really nervous about doing this, but I decided to send you a message. Overrule! Please stop the playback. Judge Courtney. What's wrong? Stop it now. It's a boy, your son. He's just been born. I'm sorry, that's all I wanted to tell you. His name is John. John Marsh. It's a fine name for him, don't you think? M Marsh. Did she say... John? I'll be waiting in the courtyard of the orphanage at midnight, on February 9th. Even if it's just once, I want John to be able to meet you. I'm sorry for being selfish, but... I'll be waiting. That was my... John. What's the meaning of this? Miss Courtney? John is not my biological son. He's adopted. Did John know about this? Of course he knew. And John's mother, Amy Marsh, passed away about five years ago. She and I were cousins. Since we were young, we've always been really close. We were often mistaken for sisters. That's why when she passed away, I thought it was only natural that I look after John. Also, there were circumstances which prevented me from revealing his father. Father's identity. I never even told John his father's name. Now it's all been revealed, next to the recording on that doll. Did John's mother send the doll to the prison? Hey. John. 
Was he the president? Really, my dad? Yes, he was. Before you were born, Amy worked as a diplomat, as a diplomat in Zen Far. Diplomat. So that's not least knew how she became acquainted with President Hong. Huang. Hang on, didn't you tell me she worked at the orphanage? Yes, after returning to this country, Amy left her job as a diplomat. She always had a great passion for charity work, so she began working at the orphanage. Not so fast. Hey, Miss Courtney. It's this Amy girl. She called the president there herself, but she never showed up at the scene of the SS5 incident. What's with that? Amy couldn't make it. Apparently someone had been following her the whole night. Perhaps it was Blaze. Can't say for certain, but it's possible that it was his duty. After that, Amy never got another chance to see the president again. So she died for five years ago. This conversation must be painful for John. Oh, right! Hey, John. You thirsty? How about I buy us both some juice? We can go together. I'm a part of this, too. I'll listen until the end. Besides, I can afford to buy my own juice. Oh, shut down by a kid. John, do you understand the reason I met with the president two days ago? The secret meeting from two nights ago. I wanted to tell him about Amy's death and... that you were alive and well. But I... I see. That's why you couldn't tell us your reasons for meeting with the president until now. I get it. She would have had to reveal his connection with John. I brought a bouquet of lion lilies. So that he would understand I truly did know about Amy. Those flowers are a dear memory of to, the president of, to the president and Amy. The first president, present she received from the president was a bouquet of lion lilies. But now, even as he has passed away... Even he has passed away. If only he was still alive. Perhaps I could have introduced him to John. He already introduced himself, didn't he? That's why John was there. Shifu! I'm sorry to interrupt this atmosphere, but there's something I need to say! Oh, what is it now? Can this wait? Well, actually, there's one last item that's been delivered from Sheng Fa. I have here the President's Will. What? The President's Will? My old man received a great number of special medals from the President himself. As a token of his trust, the President left his will in the protection of the Lang Clan. That, I think that was a flashback. Those medals in that will, they were the pride of our clan. The family treasure, so to speak. Yeah. This is... Agent Lang. Does that will have something to do with the current case? You bet it does. It says here, I hereby acknowledge John Marsh as my own son. What? John's name is in the President's will. Are you certain that will was written by the President? Yeah, he entrusted us to the Lang Clan ever, even before the SS5 incident took place. I'll have to appraise it back home. But by the name of the Lang Clan, it's the real deal. Wait, so how did- he already knew? Before he- Because if it was before the incident... Do you want to was the president of the entire nation, the existence of his son would have caused... ...considerable controversy. However, he left behind a will just in case. This makes it doubly sure. I still can't believe it myself. But there's no room for doubt. John Marsh. You are the son of Di Jun Huang, president of Zhengfa. John! John! Sorry, I keep using Lang's voice for him for some reason. <laughs> Whew, these are some long ones, guys, but um, for some reason, more entertaining than the first case was. I think because the first case was like the tutorial case, or was supposed to be a tutorial case or whatever. I don't know. It just seemed to drag on. Um, it was just like in one location. Whereas this is like jumping from different places and then we got to use Little Thief. I love using Little Thief. Um, <laughs> yeah, wow. Uh, lots, of, uh, lots of things coming to light. I'm pretty sure that the president told him 
things because he had seen the president too. Remember, he was like, he wasn't talking either. Um, yeah, something, something's going on. So we're going to, we're, I guess it, it looks like Edgeworth was chasing after him. So hopefully, um, this disappearance won't last too long. Um, I wonder if his relation to the president had anything to do with his kidnapping, though. Um, I mean, it was uh, it was for Courtney, it was for Judge, Justine Courtney. But what if it? What if there is also something involved with the? Well, no, because because that was after the death, so it wouldn't have anything to do with the president in that regard. But I don't know. Like, I wonder if Blaze knew. Anyway, I guess we'll find out some more uh, information next time. Uh, so stay tuned. Stick around. Subscribe. Get the, uh, get the updates as they come. And uh, I will talk to you guys next time. See ya.